Do you guys remember when they added armadillos to Minecraft? You know, we all voted, Mojang added them, you can make wolf armor now, and we got these little freaks walking around our savanna. Anyway, some people think they're an awesome addition, and others just freaking hate them. Are they actually useless, or is there something more going on here? As a certified wildlife biologist, I knew there was only one way to get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna be tracking armadillos for seven days straight to see what their ecological secrets are. Yeah, I do get invited to a lot of parties, thanks for asking. But this isn't just about stalking armadillos for the thrill. Maybe a little. <laughs> We're also going to be collecting a bunch of data to figure out what the heck they're up to and maybe even draw some real conclusions. Specifically, we're answering four questions. Number one, we want to know about the home range and core use area. For those who don't know, a home range is pretty much just an area that an animal is going to stick to because it has all the resources it needs to survive. Next, I want to know about habitat use. Specifically, does the vegetation have an effect on home range size? And we got to know about their activity. Armadillos are doing some weird stuff. I see them moving around. Sometimes they're just standing there and then they're just curled up in a little ball. I want to know the breakdown of this. What's going on with these weird scoots they're always pooping out? How often are they dropping these, and is there any influence with vegetation or habitat? Alright folks, so here's the plan, listen up. Today, we're gonna be running a movement ecology and habitat study in Minecraft. That's just a fancy way of saying, we're gonna be tracking these armadillos to see what habitats they prefer, which ones they avoid, and how much they move over a period of time. To do this, we're gonna be tracking seven armadillos for a full day and night. Every minute, I'm gonna record their X, Y, and Z coordinates and note what they're doing, which will be either moving, standing still, or curled up. And then I'll also track a couple important details like the biome, whether they're pooping out scoots, the time of day, and the presence of hostile mobs. And once that sun rises, the survey's over. And then we'll backtrack through every chunk the armadillo walked through and conduct a vegetation survey to see if certain habitat features influence their movements. If you want to know exactly what I'm doing with these vegetation surveys, it's the same protocol for my last video, so you gotta check that out. <laughs> Give me more views! And since I'm gonna be spending a lot of time with these armadillos, I decided to name them after my favorite US president, the bull moose himself, Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, and his six children, Archie, Alice, Ethel, Teddy Jr., Quentin, and Kermit. That's enough exposition, folks. Let's go get that data. Come on, come on, we're almost there. Just a little longer, come on, come on. And that's it, we did it. Seven armadillos tracked, countless hours of data. And now we've got everything we need to analyze what the heck these little guys are doing. To answer our first research question, we're gonna be doing a little home range analysis using kernel density estimates. KDE is just a fancy way of mapping out where animals are spending most of their time. Here's the code for it, but who gives a shit about that? Let's take a look at the home range maps. And here it is, I overlaid it on the actual biome maps from where the armadillos were. Oh, and up in the corner here, you can see the number of chunks each armadillo had in their home range. Next, we got the 50% core usage. Area. This is going to highlight the spots that armadillos were spending most of their time. The sizes range from 8 to 13 chunks, with most of them being right around 11 chunks. That result alone is awesome. Think about it, if you're an armadillo land manager, you gotta know how much space they need for their home range. And this 11 chunk estimate is perfect for us to know how big of a patch the armadillo needs to survive. Besides that, we are seeing some variation in home range size. Take a look at our friend Ethel up here. Ethel had the biggest home range at 13 chunks, and if we look at the map, she did not stay within the savanna. She was all over those stony peaks. And spoiler alert, there's not a lot of vegetation in Stony Peaks. There's, uh, there's none, actually. Not none. Any. None. No, none of it. So now we're thinking, why does Ethel have the biggest home range? Could it be the vegetation? To test this, we're running a weighted vegetation regression analysis. This just means we're testing how vegetation affects home range size, but we're also weighting it by which chunks the armadillo spent the most time in. We're not gonna get too into the weeds. Today, we're just looking at total vegetation richness and total tree count. And here's the code. I mean, we're just doing a simple linear regression. It's the easiest model there is. And you can see it right here. I'm testing testing total chunks, which is the home range, against total tree count. And on the other one, I'm testing the same thing, just against total vegetation richness. It's that simple. And you already know, we're looking for that p-value to be below 0.05, baby. All right, let's run it. As you can see, both total vegetation richness and total tree count are predicting home range size for armadillos. Yippee! 
That's got me all riled up. You know what? I'm feeling spicy. Let's make a heat map to visualize this one. Throw it up there. Gee whiz, that's sick. All right, let me break this down for you. This map is just showing the interaction between our two variables and how it impacts home range size. As you can see, we have total vegetation richness as the y-axis, and we have total tree count as the x-axis. And as these variables both increase, as you can see up in the corner up here, it's all purple. That means it's the smallest home range size. And when both of them are down here in the red, that means it's a big home range and not a lot of vegetation. Basically, this map is telling us as vegetation richness and tree count increases, home range decreases. This means that armadillos and really rich habitats don't need to roam as far to find all the things they need to survive. Like with Ethel, when she had the huge home range, it's because there's not enough vegetation. She's trying to find it. And this makes total sense in real life too. I mean, many species from bobcats to freaking songbirds will shrink their home range size based on higher quality habitat. They can find everything they need in a smaller home range, so why would they have a big one? It's way more efficient for them. And Minecraft armadillos are doing the same freaking thing? What? All right, enough about vegetation. Let's see what these armadillos are actually up to. And guess what? They spend most of their time actually moving and then standing still and very little time actually in the defensive position. The defensive part really depended on how many hostile mobs are spawning at night and it was kind of random. Oh, and I made this sick graph to show how much armadillos move each minute of the survey. Yeah, it's a little bit all over the place. They all kind of did their own thing, but I also calculated the average speed of each armadillo. As you can see, the median speed for most of them is around 11 meters per minute. Except our girl Ethel, she's a freaking speed demon. She hit 30 meters in a minute one time. Still, 11 meters per minute is pretty slow. For example, the average human can move 80 meters per minute at a slow walking pace, and the only animal comparison I could find was the bearded dragon, who's about 11 meters per minute. That's so freaking slow, and I don't care they gotta carry that big stupid shell on their back. It can't be that hard. Yeah, this is so bad. This is so bad. Alright, maybe 11 meters per minute isn't that bad. And finally, let's talk about scoots. Here it is. This is how many scoots each armadillo was dropping. The max was three, the lowest was one. And there wasn't really any significance to when or where they were dropping scoots, but it's cool to see. And that's a wrap on the results, folks. But that's pretty cool. I mean, today we successfully proved that Minecraft armadillos are adjusting their home range size based on vegetation. That's what the real world wildlife does. I mean, like we saw, they had smaller home ranges when there was more trees and higher vegetation richness. That's freaking awesome. I'd say it's high time. We start giving the armadillo the appreciation it deserves. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm freaking stoked about these results and I really hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Your support on the last video really meant the world to me and it warms my heart knowing so many of you care about wildlife biology. I gotta be honest, in the summer I might go on a bit of a hiatus because I have to collect real data for my actual thesis. But don't worry, I love making these videos and I plan on doing this long term so if you stick around there will be more to come. Just be patient. Alright, I think it's about time I scoot out of here. <laughs>